So, as we said when we started this whole thing, if you want to make movies, you go to Hollywood. If you want to make musicals, you go to Broadway. And if you want to make apps, you come to Amsterdam. I'm Mike Lee, the mayor of Amsterdam, and it is my tremendous pleasure to welcome you all here to our launch party weekend. I am uh, absolutely thrilled with the turnout, the number of people who have come here from out of town, uh, just the, the, the vibe that we've had here so far at our meeting and drinking yesterday and at the tours today. And I hope, uh, I hope that we'll see this vibe continuing, not just uh, this weekend, but this whole summer and on into the future here. So let's get started, shall we? Now, the question that people inevitably ask is, what exactly is Amsterdam? What are we talking about when we're talking about Amsterdam? Well, that's a good question. Amsterdam starts with apps. And I think that the best story I know for explaining exactly what we're talking about when we're talking about apps starts with a cup of coffee. A cup of coffee that I had not too long ago, sitting at some coffee bar here in the city, when the guy sitting next to me reached into his jacket and pulled out two turntables, a set of speakers, and his entire record collection, and actually started mixing a set right there at the bar. Now this is the sort of thing that a couple of years ago would have been impossible, but now all of this technology fits onto an iPad. This is the world that we live in now. This is the world of apps. This is what brings us here. But where did these apps come from? They come from the app makers. They come from craftsmen. And so, I myself am one of these app makers. A year ago or so, I worked at a small fruit company you may have heard of in Cupertino. And I decided that what I really wanted was, I wanted to go on an epic quest. I wanted to travel all around the world. I wanted to go to the places where the people are, but also the places where the people aren't. I wanted to go to the big cities, but also the little tiny places you never go to, like Ushuaia, the southernmost city in the world at the very bottom of South America. I wanted to see how we solve these problems, how we work, not just in the Western world, but in the entire world. I wanted to have a new perspective, to see how different people solve the same problems. <laughs> Not just in the first world, but also in the third world. When I traveled, I spoke at conferences, I hung out with other app makers, I looked at the things that people were working on, and I had adventures. And to what end? I was really looking for something. But instead of finding necessarily what I was looking for, although I did, a different narrative started to form in my travels. As I spoke to developers around the world, I started to hear the same thing over and over again. And that thing that I heard was, we're thinking about moving. Americans were thinking about leaving the US for any number of reasons that you can probably imagine. And people from Europe and around the world were talking about trying to move to where the action was. And they thought it was in Silicon Valley, but because of the immigration policies and all of this kind of stuff, they found that the valley was closed. And so, we have this whole ecosystem of people who are just buzzing around, looking for a place to settle down. And so I said, if we're all looking to settle somewhere, then we should all settle in the same place. And my research seems to indicate that the nicest place where we could possibly settle down is right here in Amsterdam. Now some people say, do we really need to be in the same place? Don't we have the internet for this sort of thing? Do we really have to sit next to and look at other people? And the answer is, is actually, yeah, we kind of do. Because yes, you know, we can certainly sit across a virtual desk from each other and work, but there's more to our careers than that. There's more to what we do than that. It's not just the time that you sit, sit there with your coworkers, it's also the time that you sit after work, having a drink or a smoke, talking about crazy things, coming up with dreams. When we are together, we can do great things. And to show you the kind of great things I'm talking about, I'd like to bring up a special guest, my good friends at the 1% Club. <laughs> wow. Um, 
big honor to be here tonight. Uh, extremely impressive to see what crowd you brought together here, Mike. It's, uh, it's really inspiring to be here. Uh, it's also be inspiring to be part of the 1% Club. Uh, I'm a board member of the 1% Club. I'm not daily actively involved in, uh, in managing the, the club. Uh, those are uh, a few other folks. I was asked to represent them here uh, tonight. I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, the 1% Club, uh, who knows of the 1% Club in the audience? A few hands. That's good. That's good. Another 7,500 people are member of the 1% Club and it's, uh, it's a club that's growing rapidly and they're using the internet and the mobile web to basically fight poverty. Uh, and small, and they, they want to turn around the, the, the nature of, uh, of aid. They want not to think in big head, head offices here in the, in the Western world what we need to do for those poor people in the, in the South. They want the, south, the people from the South to ask us for specific help and we will give them that help. Yeah, the help can be money for things they need to buy or it can be uh, support, uh, engineering to build, a, to build a school or plumbing or uh, developing apps or websites for people who, who live there. So we really want to turn that around and they created a, a, a wonderful um, a website and mobile app now to, uh, to support that. Um, actually, it's the company Accenture, the company I work at, that developed their mobile app. Uh, their mobile app. Uh, it's a HTML5. Cool, right? Not cool. <laughs> Not cool. <laughs> that was extremely cool. Um, we don't, we did just developed the first version, um, and we want to keep on further developing it. So there is more functions added uh, to it. Um, and. The, the, the only fact I just want to share after this is, um, is how the 1% Club uh, got started. Um, in about five years ago, Accenture started the Innovation Awards. Basically a bit, a bit similar to what we're getting here now in the mobile movement, uh, the app movement. Uh, we thought in the media industry, the media and entertainment industry, there's a huge need for innovation, for new ways to bring content to people, to new, for new business models. But all of our clients, they didn't know where to go. We thought, let's give them a full overview of what's happening. Let's bring those people together in events. And, and we will inspire them. And, and they will get inspired by each other. And, and that's what happened. First year, Celebant uh, won the Innovation Awards. Who knows Celebant? Yeah, a few more. So Celebant is basically a 1% club for bands, right? Um, or you could say the other right way around. The 1% Club was inspired by Celebant. They saw it, they, they were the winner in the first year. The second year, we got an entry, uh, it's 1% Club. Basically using the thoughts of, of uh, Celebant, but now to fight poverty. Um, and, and last year we had other entrants, again, using crowdsourcing, crowdfunding to do other stuff. So we see that it actually works, and I think it's, it's really, uh, when you bring people together, when you bring ideas together and you can do amazing stuff and uh, the people at the 1% Club are doing it every day and I think uh, this is another great movement and I'm, uh, I'm a great fan already. Thanks. Thanks very much. We like to talk about changing the world and people like to say how are you going to change the world with apps. People like the 1% Club proves that we really can make a difference in very big ways. Thank you again. So why Amsterdam? Why specifically this place? What's, what's so great about it? Why should you come here? Well, there's a bunch of different reasons. Uh, healthcare. I mean, I'm just going to throw that out there for people who ask, how are we going to compete with the Valley? How are we going to compete with California, New York, Boston? Uh, how are we going to compete with the United States? Healthcare. I don't know what else to say. I mean, if you work for yourself, if you, if you don't necessarily believe in selling your soul to a large company just so that you and your family uh, can see a doctor, then, uh, you know, healthcare, we have it. And if you're, uh, if you're an independent here in, uh, in the Netherlands, you can have it too. But it's more than just that, of course, because most of the world has healthcare. Uh, there's also just the livability of the place. Uh, you know, I mentioned that I had been looking for something when I went on this trip, and that was really what I was looking for. Just for myself and my girlfriend, looking for the most livable city in the world. You know, looking at, at, at cities in the world, not in terms of, 
emotion or patriotism, but in a very sort of capitalistic way, like a consumer would look at things. How is the quality of life here? How expensive is it? Do I want to raise kids here? Is there work to be had here? All of these sorts of questions. And, you know, you can, you, can, you can come up with a lot of cities that do this better than Amsterdam or that better than Amsterdam, but when you're talking about really living in a place, it is a, it is a series of compromises. And when you do all of the math, you consider all of the compromises, this really does become just the most livable city in the world. We have so many things here that are, are just make it so nice. The buildings are so nice, the canals, I mean, biking around. For those of you who, who took tours or who live here and who know this place, you know what a wonderful place it is to live. The people here are happy. You don't see a bunch of haggard homeless people on the streets. Even the stray animals look fat and happy. <laughs> the quality of life here is so good. The people are so laid back, but at the same time, there's always an eye toward commerce. There's always a, a, a strain of, of business that runs underneath. The, 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 the values of this place are very much in line with the values that we hold dear as a community. Values like tolerance, values like independence, but also safety. I mean, all of the things that we want, this place has them. And then, of course, there's the, 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 the very, shall we say, idea of Amsterdam. There's, there's a cachet to this place, if you will, that other places just don't have. You know, you might say, well, you know, I, I, I happen to know this, this secret place that's actually way better than Amsterdam. But you know what? Never, no, nobody's ever heard of it. And if you try to convince somebody to move there, they're going to be very suspicious of that. When I tell people, hey, we're all moving to Amsterdam, people say, great, how do we do that? <laughs> the name Amsterdam means something to people. It, it, it is a beacon of freedom and liberty and commerce and prosperity that the entire world recognizes. It is a platform and a brand on which we can build our own platform and our own brand. We can bring people here and the city will sell itself. I don't have to convince anybody to move to Amsterdam. We just have to help them figure out how. And then, of course, there is the government here. And if you live here, you're probably like, what the government? Ugh. <laughs> like we all feel about every government everywhere. I mean, it's just how it is. But you have to have a government, you have to have roads, and if you're lucky, the government might actually understand something about technologies. And I find that the government here really does. I mean, we have things like the open data initiative here. The city's data is sitting there. Open data to a developer is like crude oil bubbling out of the ground. It is money that is just waiting to be sucked up and turned into something. When I talk to the people from the government, they're hungry for technology. They recognize the expertise that our community represents. They want us here. And again, their values are similar to our values. Need I say the words net neutrality? <laughs> finally, finally, a, shall we say, G8 nation that's willing to stand up and have the guts to actually say, you know what, we think that everybody deserves equal access to the internet. We've all been saying it for years, it seems like nobody's listening to us, and finally, somebody listens, and it's this government from the, the general livability of the place to the specifics of the place, it all just points to a, a paradise for app makers. And then you might say, we have a very strong foundation here. And I say you might say that because if you talk to people here, they tend to say that there's, eh, there's not that much going on here. There's really no developer culture here. And in fact, when I first got here, I was really kind of under the impression that there was no developer culture here because that's what developers kept telling me. And every single day I would go to a developer meetup, every single week I would go to some conference, and I would listen to a room full of developers tell me that there's no developer culture here. <laughs> and I started to realize that maybe the problem was more a problem of, I don't know, communication. There's actually quite a lot of stuff going on here. There's, 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 there's every kind of, of thing that you would expect from a, a real happening, plugged in, sort of technology-centric kind of place, like this is. And so, I would like to bring up some people to demonstrate to you what I'm talking about, starting with my good friend Glenn, with his startup indie shop, Life Labs. Hi guys. Um, I'm going to ask you guys a question. Imagine if you could remember and relive everything you do, every day, every month, every week, every year, I don't know, for the rest of your life. Remember what you did this weekend, did yesterday, um, that's what Life Labs is. Um, 
Currently, we have two products. One of them is an iPhone app that we plan to release next Tuesday, and the other one is a neck wearable pouch called the Life Pouch. And when you combine these, these two, you put the iPhone in the pouch, you turn on our app, it will record everything you do from the first person perspective. So all you guys are on my camera at the moment, and every 30 seconds it will take a picture. And when you put this, this, this data, these, these pictures, in a web platform and combine all kinds of other data, such as uh, Foursquare check-ins or Twitter feed or any other kind of data that your friends and yourself have generated over the time of your life. And let's say I want to know what happened yesterday at the meet and drink and meet up at the Newmark. And I log in at my Life Labs account, I see my data, my feed, I, I see what I saw. But I see that Mike uh, tweeted some stuff, I click on his account, and every, everything combined will allow my memory to remember what I did. So it's not just uh, plain looking at stuff at a web page, but it will allow, allow your mind to remember and relive the things you did. And as I said, we're launching next Tuesday. Um, you can all go to livelabs.com and check out what we're doing. Um, if you want, I could give you a demo up next. And if you feel like it, go to livepouch.com and, and enter the Amsterdam promo code if you want to buy one of these nice neck wearable pouches. Thank you. There are so many awesome indie developer shops. A couple of guys who have an idea and who are passionate about something and who actually make this into a reality. There are so many people like that here. It's, it, it's how you know you're in a place that, that really has a great technology culture. But there's more to it than just indie shops. I mean, an ecosystem really requires also startups, you know, companies that are really headed for the big leagues. And you know what? We have those two. And to demonstrate that, I'd like to bring up my friend Alexander from SWAP. So I'm Alex Van Elsen, so I'm not going to do a product pitch if you uh, don't mind. If you want to try it out, it's free to download it from the App Store. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about the experience I had meeting Mike. Uh, a few months ago, I saw this little newspaper article about this guy from the US, a big guy, and I heard of him before. He had this big plan and this big vision about Amsterdam, the, the city of apps. And I was thinking, i got to meet this guy. Because I do apps, and I love it, and I don't know. I just wanted to see if I could help him out. And, you know, he didn't disappoint me at all, and I think, you know, all of us should just get up right now and give him a big applause. Look at what's going on here. But obviously, it doesn't stop with him, right? It just starts with him. So, if we're going to make Amsterdam a big success, then we need to do something together to make it work. And I thought about, you know, what we could do, and... I came up with the idea, well, my company, or Swap, is basically uh, a way of solving discovery problems with apps. The app stores are getting bigger and bigger, and it's hard to find really cool apps, and we figured, why not try to find cool apps because we know cool people, you know, friends that have great apps, and Swap tries to solve that. Now, the thing I can do for the Amsterdam community is the following. We're going to build the Amsterdam channel in Swap, and the channel will be place where people that work for Amsterdam do cool stuff with apps and get together, you know, and get together with their fans, get together with the people that use their apps and start communicating with them. That's one thing that we can do. The other thing is, you know, on Swap, you can get into contact with the people that actually use your app. You can see them, you can see what they say about it, you can talk to them, you can figure out how to make things better and make it even, you know, a greater app than it already is. And the third thing that we are going to do is we're going to help app, you know, developers get their apps visible to a passionate app community, because that's what this company is about. We're building the biggest app community of people that love apps. It's all about people that we're trying to reach out to. So anybody that's interested in building apps and building a distribution for apps, they should just get into contact with me. And if you're a part of the Apps Lee movement, we're going to help you promote apps and get into contact with fans that really love your app. So just, you know, my credentials are there. Just tweet me figure out how to get to me. We're going to start working on promoting your apps through this channel where you know, there are passionate app lovers. You guys can just start building your apps there and get into contact with the people that actually use your product. So that's my thing and that's how I, can, I think I can help Amsterdam and 
know, I'm really happy with Mike, and it's going to be a great movement, I think. Thanks. So we've got the indies, and we've got the startups. How about events? I said earlier that I was going to, to conferences every week, right? Where, where were these conferences, these alleged tech conferences? Where were these things happening? Uh, they can't possibly be happening here, right? Because uh, we only have a conference here like once a year. Uh, this seems to be the opinion of most people who I, uh, who I survey on this subject. How many tech conferences do you think we have here? Yeah, maybe once a year. It really is more like once a week. We have so much stuff going on here. So much cool stuff. And one of those cool stuffs is the Amsterdam Startup Weekend. Woo! And I'd like to bring them on stage now. Hi everyone, uh, thanks Mike for the invitation to have a quick chat to you about Startup Weekend. My name's Dwight, uh, I come from Australia, so I guess I'm a bit of a test case for Amsterdam. I've been here for uh, about a year and a half. Uh, very happy to be here uh, living now in the Netherlands. So we're, I'm a co-organiser with Startup Weekend. Uh, Amsterdam will be the 8th to the 10th of July. That's just in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, it's our second one in the city. We ran an earlier one in uh, Eindhoven earlier in the year. So, uh, and, and what is Startup Weekend for those who don't know? It's a 54-hour event running over the weekend. We start on the Friday evening with uh, pitches for people who have an idea for a business. And then basically everyone forms a team, gets down to business, literally, and uh, then come together again on the Sunday evening to pitch to a panel of expert judges. I think there's a couple around here uh, who I've seen in the audience, in the crowd. Uh, also along the way we have some guest speakers to motivate and educate. And thankfully Mike has, uh, has joined us this, year, uh, this time around. So he's one, just one of uh, quite a few speakers that we have. Uh, and also, there are a set of mentors as well who will be cruising around the, the floors of uh, Packhouse des Vega, which is the venue. Uh, those, men, uh, those mentors will be able to, uh, to give the participants advice from all sorts of things, from business plans to marketing, uh, product features, product market fit, all those sorts of good things that you need when you're developing uh, and preparing a business. Uh, that pretty much sums it up, I think. Uh, some more of the logistics. We have uh, tickets, 80 euro, uh, 45 for students. They're available via our website. That's startup, uh, amsterdam.startupweekend.org. Uh, and I think that pretty much covers it. So we hopefully we will see quite a few of you there. Um, if you haven't already grabbed a ticket, please do so. As you can see, we actually have quite a lot of stuff going on. We have quite a nice basis, quite a lot to grow on here. So how do we pull this off? We know that we should all be together in one place. We see that this is <laughs> Redundant microphone, awesome. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So how do we do this thing? How do we pull this thing off? Well, I have a very complicated plan. <laughs> it's not really that complicated. It's actually pretty simple. I just like to use big words. Uh, we're going to start by building an informa uh, information infrastructure, uh, by which I mean we're going to have a way that we can all get together and exchange information, right? We can all get together and talk. Uh, once we have the ability to get together and talk, then we can actually start organizing the local developers. And I think that we're starting to see that now. We have a place where we can get together, we have a cause to get together, uh, and then we have a reason to get together, and we can all get together. And uh, this stuff sounds obvious, right? Yeah, build an infrastructure and, and, and get everybody together and organize people. But yet, it, it, it's really what's been missing. You know, the, 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 the rooms full of developers who think that there are no developers here, the, the events that are happening every week that people have, have never heard of. Uh, really, it, it, it comes down to a communications problem. And uh, we would like to solve that communications problem by you know, being this sort of a person in the middle, putting together a, a, a bit of a, a concert calendar, if you will, of, uh, of what's going on and, uh, and, and who exactly is here. And to uh, talk a little bit more about that, I'd like to bring out our 
Director of Volunteers and Operations, uh, Mr. Klaus Speller. So we have this website up, and, and, and the website is really important because it not only shows uh, you guys what exactly we have here for you, who's working here, who the developers are, who the designers are, who's available, who's hiring, all this kind of information, how much stuff is going on here. It also shows that stuff to the entire world, right? When you think about it, if somebody was looking to make movies, they would probably start with the Hollywood phone book, and when somebody's looking to make an app, they will start with our web page because this is a central list of people who can make apps. It is a very, very useful information. It shows the world exactly what we're doing here. And it makes sure that, it makes sure that everything we do uh, is, 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 is sort of seen by the entire world. That people see what a great place uh, we have here. Because our ultimate goal then is to attract outside talent, right? We want to make a destination for app makers. We want people to associate the city with making apps. So that if making apps is what you want to do, then here is where you're going to come. And, of course, once we have the infrastructure in place to exchange information, and we have the people who are visiting us on that infrastructure, then we just plug them into the infrastructure, suck all the knowledge out of their heads, and have all the world's information right here in Amsterdam. Because that's easy, right? Exactly. Exactly. And then, of course, once we have all the world's knowledge accumulated, then we will prepare the next generation. And uh, there's a lot of ways that we're going to prepare the next generation. There's a lot of uh, things that we can do. Uh, university programs are, uh, are, are an obvious choice, for example. But there's also some, uh, some more interesting ways that we can contribute towards sort of continuing education. Uh, and, and one of those ways is by working with an organization that I have become very fond of, which is the BNO. I'm not going to try to pronounce the Dutch, but it's the Association of Dutch Designers. Because one thing that makes this country very unique as opposed to, say, the U.S., where designers are very much independent beasts who are very hard to root out and find, uh, all the designers here have an association. It represents all designers in all fields. So if you're a designer and you come here, you can hook up with these guys. And if you're looking for a designer, like every programmer I know either is or should be doing, uh, then this is a great place to find them. But of course, application design is it's a very specific type of design. You know, it's different from web design, it's different from, from, from layout design, print design, uh, graphic design. It's a very specific field. And the BNO recognizes this field, but they've not yet had the sort of outside knowledge necessary to actually make a serious program out of it. Working together with the BNO, aside from meeting all of our design needs, we'll be able to put such a program together. So that this will not only be a destination for, say, programmers, but this will also be a destination for designers. Any aspiring designer, and then we will have all the designers we need. So what does this all add up to? What do all these big fancy words mean? What's, what's, what's the practical? What's the takeaway? What stuff do I actually have for you guys? 
And that brings us to this, this thing that we're launching here today, right? This summer of Amsterdam. Amsterdam part one, if you will, our first set of initiatives. And Amsterdam part one is all about getting together. As you may have heard it say in a short video, it's, that's going to start with Amsterdam official hangouts. The idea is that every day you need a place to work, you want places where you can bring your laptop, sit there, get some work done, and be surrounded by other app makers. You want to go someplace where you know that you can sit, where you know that your needs, Wi-Fi, power, these sorts of things are going to be met, but also know that you're going to run into cool people there. Because that's what you get in the valley, right? That's why people put up with the valley. Because you can do that. You can go to a cafe, you can sit there, you can have some coffee, and you can turn to the guy next to you who you've never met before and say, do you have any luck with this certificate stuff? Because I can't figure this out at all. And have something other than a blank stare returned. <laughs> And so by, by, by rooting out these great places for us to hang out, it'll give us a place to get together, a place to naturally have this kind of friendship building and information exchange that we're experiencing this weekend. And I'm very, very pleased to announce that we are launching our first Amsterdam official hangout at the NDSM Wharf. And uh, we are very fortunate to have uh, folks from NDSM uh, here with us. Frank Alcina, everybody, from NDSM. It's in uh, another very nice spot of Amsterdam, which is Amsterdam Nord. And I think it's even more interesting than Amsterdam, because the Nord is on the sunny side of the river. So uh, please join this headquarters. It's only 50 minutes by boat from the central station. Take the good boat, otherwise you are on the other spot. But Amsterdam Nord is, 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 is getting hip and more involved. Uh, the Docklands, um, uh, we, we do have a lot of things going on there. We have big parties, uh, up to 50,000 people, <clears throat> but we have also small uh, working spaces for artists. There is even an art city where 200 independent uh, artists are already working for 10 years. Some of them are uh, working in the media, but some of them are just making sets or painting or really craft, craft work. And I do hope that this, this fusion of artists, and the, uh, the new media people and the, 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 let's say the old media, old school, I even have my old school t-shirt, because I, I bought this this morning in Hamburg, because I was this morning in Hamburg where 50,000 Harley Davidsons came together. Wow, this is great, this sound of Harley Davidsons. But it was so cold, so I bought this t-shirt. Uh, <laughs> um, to say about, uh, yes, why I, I'm, I'm giving this official hangout, I'm very happy we, we, can, we, can, we can do this. It's a, it's a very uh, silly sort of container, as you saw. Uh, it's very temporary. temporary. Uh, we call it the Tussentijd, the time in between. Uh, at the Docklands, uh, big plans are there, but the money is not there, so we have a sort of in-between time. And energy is huge, There's going on so much. Um, we launched uh, yesterday our new beach, so if you have a picnic tomorrow on the beach, and there is a restaurant which is not official, but don't tell, um, so you can have your drinks there, and have to, but we have the most beautiful terrace, you have, we look on, the, on, on Amsterdam, on the corner of the, the, the eye. Um, what we do this year on the summer, uh, we are very happy also to get in September, we have picnic, who knows picnic festival? It's going to be at, uh, at uh, it's a media festival, and this year's the first year at uh, Picnic, or at, at, at the Docklands, at NDSM, and the team is uh, building a new city. So they're going to build in three days, well, we do it of course in three weeks, but in three days we have a new city there. And for that, we are also working very hard on glass, glass fiber, because it's a, a dock. Uh, 30 years ago they built ships there, but now we try to make a fusion of media and, 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 and art and also a new media, so we have to bring in the glass here. Uh, I hope it's going to work soon so that also the Amsterdam people have enough network because all, if all these people are going to be to the containers, we have a problem. The network will go down. Um, why I'm doing this? My background is a TV director. I, I used to work, I made Sesame Street 35 years ago, so I'm <laughs> I bet you have seen Big Bird, the yellow Big Bird. Of course, everyone's seen Big Bird. Yeah. I, I visited Big Bird, the yellow Big Bird, in 1981 in New York. Wow, I think I was uh, five. 
So you saw him. So I am seeing your big whip. Um, <laughs> why I'm saying this? I don't know. Um, <laughs> what I'm trying to say, so I come from old media. Even at time, that time, the TV was black and white because I, I, we were talking about the set, and the set still people were watching black and white television. Then the internet started, World Wide Web, long ago. So at TV, I, I, I decided to go to the World Wide Web, designing games, and now I decided to go to this Docklands to make the fusion of the real world, the virtual world, and, and, and a combination of, of all these elements. And I myself, I'm also working still in the apps with Martinez Meiber, who's sitting there, who's filming me now. Uh, he joined you also today for a trip, uh, one of the trips, and we're working on a, a, a startup company called Camerize. And Camerize is doing my old job, because one of my jobs, and I'm still doing it because it's a great job, to do edit, real-time editing with TV. So you have 10 of cameras, and they have a big truck, a van, and then you make live TV. And we do the same now with the mobile camera, so with 10 mobile cameras, we make a big van, big truck, editing room in the cloud, so you can do live editing in the cloud. And we hope to have a picnic, the real live presentation of this uh, new app, which is not there yet in the App Store, but I hope it's going to be in the Swap uh, App Store. So I'm a sort of fusion guy myself, so I hope the fusion of apps to them <coughs> is, is going to work, because I think the new cool apps will come in this fusion area. So I hope to see you at the end of the moment. For, for letting us use the NDSM dock. I mean, it really is an incredible space. If you're up there on the tour, you know what a great space it is, and if you didn't get a chance to check it out, we have our hangover brunch tomorrow at noon, and if you didn't read about it already, of course, we're going to, uh, we're going to be very Dutch, and we're going to eat bread and things on bread. So, uh, you know, if you're, uh, if you're a local, uh, come on over and bring your favorite, uh, bring your favorite broji toppings, and, uh, and everyone else can uh, come and figure out what I, what, what I just said. <laughs> But yeah, no, the NDSM is awesome. Uh, you know, imagine bringing your laptop out there, taking that, that, that really nice ferry ride past the sunken Russian submarine, going right up to where the artificial beach is, and then sitting there with your laptop and working right next to the water, looking over the city as the ships and the fast ferries fly by. It, it truly is an amazing, beautiful, and inspirational space. Really looking forward to that. But of course, Sometimes uh, sitting outside at a table is not necessarily your cup of tea. Sometimes you're looking for something uh, a little bit more formal than that. Uh, maybe the ferry crossing is very inconvenient for you, who knows? Luckily, there's all kinds of space in the city. Uh, if you're looking for an office space in particular, there's all kinds of incredible spaces in the city uh, for you to find. Uh, but as far as other uh, developer hangouts, uh, we definitely have some great stuff in the works, and to talk about some of that, I want to uh, have a very, very big round of applause for our party sponsors, Igloo and Vodafone. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Bert Franz. I'm the uh, co-founder and owner of Igloo, and I'm here also representing uh, Vodafone tonight. Uh, let me first uh, start by saying, Mike, that I think that the Amsterdam is a great initiative. I, uh, I, uh, I come from Amsterdam, and I think this is one of the best things that can happen to this city. Um, and uh, because there's a lot of talent here, there's a lot of creative people here, and uh, I can also see that you guys could use a, uh, a platform, a true community, to help you uh, grow your business. So um, I think you cannot uh, thank Mike enough. I would buy him another beer later on. Uh, if I were you, uh, for organizing all of this. Um, but uh, let me briefly explain what it is. We do, uh, yes, we do have a, a bit more formal hangout for uh, uh, freelancers than the, uh, than the plants. Um, we are, we're called Igloo, and uh, we provide shared office space, a place where people can work, can meet each other, can connect, uh, can bounce ideas off of each other, can... Uh, uh, build a new community, uh, can uh, start joint ventures, all of those great things is what happens with, uh, with people that work, uh, work at Eagle. Uh, we started off with a, with a first location in Utrecht, uh, we built a, another one in The Hague. We're working on a location in Eindhoven and Nijmegen and uh, later on this year, uh, together with uh, Photophone, because that's where Photophone kicks in, together with Photophone we will uh, start a new location right next door to the central station. 
um, on the sixth floor of a building that will be primarily uh, occupied by, by Photophone. So we're the uh, next door neighbor to Photophone. And um, what Photophone is doing for us there, and is more or less something that is more for you guys than it is for us, they are helping us with all sorts of unique facilities that uh, would be helpful for you as well. Uh, for example, they, uh, and I can announce that uh, tonight, is uh, they will uh, build in our facilities a, a, a test lab, uh, uh, lab for uh, smartphones. They will provide to you guys all available smartphones on the market and uh, give the opportunity to you to uh, hook up your, uh, uh, or to uh, upload your latest uh, app and see what it does on all sorts of the different smartphones. That's a, that's a great unique feature that they will help us with to build there. Now, this is something... Uh, thank you. Uh, this is something that, uh, um, that, like I said, is available for all of you and, uh, and hopefully by December uh, we'll see a, a lot of you uh, coming to our place to uh, 2D Igloo and have a great working experience there. Meet lots of people, uh, uh, let's say further build your community and uh, have lots of fun over there. And uh, for the rest of the night, I hope uh, you enjoy the, uh, the drinking and uh, the good company, and I hope you meet a lot of new people, interesting contacts. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And thank you for all of this. It's just wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. So we have a lot of really cool spaces. A lot of really great places to work, a lot of really great places to get together, to meet people, to know where the developers are, to know where the action is. So that's part one of the Summer of Amsterdam. But what about something a little bit more formal than that? This is why we're putting together our weekly Wednesday lunchtime lecture series. So the idea is that every Wednesday, starting in July, we're going to get together, all the nerds, and one of us will get up, like I am up here now, like I'll probably be up here at the first lecture, and talk about what we've learned, what we're working on, what cool stuff we have up in here that we'd like to share with everybody else. And when people come to visit us from out of town, this is that infrastructure that we're going to plug them into to suck their brains dry, because we've already got it set up. And then, once we have all of this going on, we're also going to get speaker training, because for some of us, maybe all of us, it is kind of terrifying to stand up and talk to a room full of people about technology, and there's, a, there's definitely an art to it. But it is very important that we all learn to talk about technology, because a, a city full of technologists is great, but a city full of technologists who are actually capable of technology, well, that's really something altogether different. Because every time a journalist wants to talk to somebody about some story in the technology space, they're going to call us here. And whenever somebody is putting together a conference and they need speakers, they're going to look here first. And when a university is looking for lecturers, they're going to know where to find them. We are all going to be not only the best technologists in the world, but we're going to be the best at talking about technology so that when we talk about technology, the world will listen. And that's great. These are all the sorts of things that you might kind of expect. A bunch of nerds getting together and doing nerdy things. That's, that's pretty typical. But we want to go further than that. We want to do things that have never before been attempted in our industry. And we're going to start that with the Amsterdam Family Weekends. Because a lot of us... Yeah, exactly. Some of a lot of us have families. I would say all of us have families. We have partners, we have children, we have other people in our lives, and those people suffer when we're not there. And when we are at work, we are not there. When you're doing a project, you might be sleeping at home, but you're not there. And uh, I have to tell you, there are far too many projects where people go out to change the world and they come back to a divorce. We don't want that kind of thing to happen. And so we're going to get together not just ourselves as nerds to talk about nerd things, but with our families so that we can get to know each other that much better, so our families will know each other, so that they can support each other, so that when we're all out and gone and working, they can turn to each other and say, well, it's a good time to talk some stink. <laughs> I think it also is going to help a lot with the diversity of the community in general. I know that this is a big problem that a lot of us worry about, uh, and I think that, that it, it, it's more complicated 
than just saying, well, we're going to try to recruit people from this ethnic group or we're going to try to recruit people from this gender. I think that it really comes down to making everybody feel welcome. We get a little bit carried away when we get with each other. We get our kind of our nerd thing on. We like to have these little pissing contests with each other and make fun of each other for the different languages that we use or the platforms that we're on. And we call them our better halves for a reason. They tend to, to calm us down and to make us uh, behave ourselves a little bit better. And so when people come to visit our community and decide if they'd like to join our community, uh, they will feel welcome and they will join us. And we will take care of this problem once and for all in this place where everyone has always been welcome. And then finally, finally I'd like to talk about our community and the community. The community in the, the grander sense of the people who live around here. The natives, if you will. Not just the native app makers, but the people who have lived here for a long time. I mean, being in the valley, one thing that I noticed was that even though it's ostensibly the center of the world's technology, the, the workers in the offices do not have better workflows than anybody else. The city of Palo Alto, in the heart of Silicon Valley, their website is just as terrible as every other city's website. I mean, the technology is not leaking out into the general population. People are not benefiting from the technology that's being created in their backyard. And I think that we should change that. And so, every once in a while, we're going to get together and we're going to have a sort of meet the makers community outreach program where we say something like, if you have a document-based workflow in your office, then come and meet people who are working on apps that are going to help you to make your workflow better. And we're also going to meet our users so that we can know them better and so that we can serve them better. And we're not just going to have this be another source of technology that the world mines. We're going to have this be the most technologically rich region in the entire world. Not just the people working in technology, but everyone. And so all of this adds up the summer of Amsterdam to one simple message, which is come to Amsterdam. That's what this organization is here to help you with. It's here to answer your questions. If you need to talk to an accountant or an immigration attorney or a corporate lawyer, you need help finding a housing agent so you can find a place to stay, whatever it is that you need to come here or to be here, this is the place. This is the place for developers. This is the place for creatives, for designers, for everybody who's making these apps, this transformational software that works with its hardware to create an experience for everyone in this industry. This is your home, be it your first home or your second home. Come to Amsterdam. And if you'll please excuse me for saying so, there is one more thing. There is one more thing. Uh, when I talk to people about Amsterdam, they're, they're, they're generally excited and, and, and they usually get it. And, uh, and then inevitably they're like saying, well, but if we're talking about the valley, I mean, what about the funding? Yeah, what about the funding part of that? Yeah, we don't have the Kleiner Perkins, we don't have the Sequoia. How are we gonna pull this off? And my answer has really been, don't worry about the funding. I mean, honestly, 80% of funding requests are just bad planning. We don't do things here by coming up with ideas and getting funded for building those ideas with you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars. We do things by having an idea that is so powerful that it burns us from the inside, that we have to get it out, that we have to create. We have passion. We have to build the things that we build. It's part of us. And so we build these things, we bootstrap. We have real legitimate business plans so that we can make money in ways that make sense to normal people. That's how we build companies here. But yeah, there are those, there are those companies who have a really big vision and, and, and they've bootstrapped and, and they really are ready to take it to the next level. And it really would be nice if there were some people who not only could help them out with some money, but also with a network. And you know, maybe they know how to build uh, technology, but they're not necessarily uh, good at building businesses. Which is why I am very, very pleased to announce the formation of the Appster Fund.
talk about the African Forest, my very, very good friend Forrest from Solid Ventures, who are leading the charge on this. Forrest, here you go. Thank you, Mike. I think it was about four weeks ago, and I read a blog on Amsterdam and said, why the heck didn't I think of that? So I, uh, I sent an email, I knew the guys at Sofa, I saw Mike was working there, and, uh, and we meet up at a bar, had a coffee, had a cigarette, thank you Mike. <laughs> and then I saw, wow, what, what is this Yang doing here in the US? And then I heard, well, he's not really a Yang, he's from Hawaii, and I'm a big fan of Robbie Nash, so I said, it must be a place to come from. Uh, and we discussed, uh, or he discussed, what he wanted to do, his, uh, his uh, trip around the world, uh, his experience uh, building his own company, selling it off, with his experience with venture capitalists, uh, his experience at Apple, which I like very much as well, and then his great idea to create here in the middle of Europe uh, a hub for great developers. And one of the things that I've learned, uh, having invested in, I think, over 60 company, companies now over the last 14 years, is that it's all about people. And most successful companies being involved with were led by great developers. Uh, so if Mike was the guy that could help bring talent from the US and have those guys share their knowledge with great Dutch entrepreneurs or great Dutch developers, but also create a hub for other international developers to come here to Amsterdam and create great apps. I thought, well, that inspired me. I thought, how can I help him? I'm just a stupid investor. I'm not a nerd, although I read nerdy books. Uh, I spend a lot of time with nerds. And actually, I pretty much like it. Uh, so I thought, well, what am I good at? Uh, well, I think I have some experiences in helping nerds to think about business, think about uh, thinking about to try to move yourself uh, in an investor's place or in a customer place. How is an investor looking at stuff? How will the investor perceive me being a nerd with this great plan? So one of the things that I directly propose is that I'm happy to join and come by every week and whenever there are app developers that are on the verge already to bring some, some, some new app to the markets or want to start discussing about creating the companies, I'll just come by and, and coach them and advise them on what the best route would be to do that for. And I think Amsterdam is a great place to do uh, that uh, as well. But you actually want to go one step further. Yeah, like Mark Zuckerberg, he started off in, uh, at, uh, at university, and then at some point in time, he needed to have some more servers to have his, uh, his app running on. And for that, you turn very quickly to your friends. Well, if it's all nerdy friends that already put a lot of energy and, 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 and their spare money in coming here to this great place, it w wouldn't it be nice also that there's a group of people, and uh, I'm happy to announce that I'm talking with some other great venture capitalists, but also some great entrepreneurs that have been around and have set up their own company and are willing to do something for this great city, and in particular for the, um, the Epster Fund, to have that group of people to support the initial stages of setting up your own company and, uh, and, and putting your app first to the market. Uh, but then, the next step is obviously, I believe, the most interesting uh, aspect. Is that we will help you also get in contact and help you prepare. And so it's the pitching, but it's also uh, trying to, to really get into the, uh, the, the, uh, on the right spot with the right investors to help you bridge the next step that once you've started off, when, once you have the first traction with your app, really to start to raise money and uh, to be able to create a company that will make an impact in the world. And I hope that all of you will start doing that. I wish you a great evening, and at some point in time, I guess we'll need to get working. Thank you. So we started this evening by asking what is Amsterdam? And as you can see, there's really a, a lot going on here. There are very big parts of it, whether you're a developer or a designer, whether you've been doing this for a while, or you're trying to get into it, 
whether you're looking to go with some funding or you're looking to do this whole thing yourself and just build a nice steady little business for you and your family, we have a place for you here. But obviously this explanation is, is, is only okay. It's not great. It could be a little bit better. And it could be a little bit better because a lot of times when I tell people about it, they say that sounds really good what you are doing. I hope you succeed. And that really tells me that they didn't hear me at all. Because the people who get it tell me, how can I help? How can I help? I didn't do this. It's convenient to thank me for it, but I didn't do this. I didn't put this party together. There were two dozen of your fellow Amsterdammers who pitched in, who took time out of their schedules, who used their skills and their passions to build this thing. This is not about an organization or about an individual. This is a movement. It's about people just pitching in and doing what they can. Things like the iPad stands that 4Media donated. Things like this venue from our sponsors. Things like this book courtesy of enough software that we have available for free for all of you, which is basically your guide to the entire galaxy of mobile development on every platform. It's actually a really good book. I enjoyed it a lot. That's why I'm pimping it right now. The point is this. When we think about what is Amsterdam, the only answer that is going to let us succeed is to understand that I'm not Amsterdam, the city's not Amsterdam, we are Amsterdam. All of us are Amsterdam. This is Amsterdam. Welcome to Amsterdam. Thank you. up for our volunteers, the people who actually made this possible. And if you have any left, give it up for our sponsors, Vodafone and Igloo. Thank you very much. And finally, thank you all for coming. Let's drink some beer.